Okay, bud, a three second zero to 60 time and a three foot plus wading depth for all those water sports you may participate in. 260 to 400 miles of range and of course, 11,000 pounds of towing capacity at a $70,000 price tag and you get a truck that probably shouldn't be real coming from a brand that just two years ago hadn't even come out with anything that was worth biting your teeth into. And don't get me wrong, EVs are neat with their own severe shortcomings, sure. But I've always believed that electric vehicle companies should be putting effort towards an EV truck, not a car because that functionality is super crucial. After all, there's no shortage of truck purchases in 2021. Honestly, there's 11.6 million truck purchases, light truck vehicles out of the 15 and a half million in 2021 in the United States. I'm Alex, Alex on Martini with two underscores and today we're gonna to be talking about some of the cautious optimisms I have about Rivian and also getting your thoughts on if this is something that people should be able to bite their teeth into. I said it twice, not like your girlfriend bites your arm when they get nervous, but like actually bite your teeth into. Anyway, we're just gonna get right into it. And I love you, seriously. Thank you for the support. Let me know your thoughts on Rivian and if you think it's worth buying one of these things for the $60,000 markup that's also on top of the $70,000 price tag because yet again, money isn't real in 2022 and life doesn't matter. Electric vehicles have always had one or two primary issues with their like entire concept of being a car. It is their mileage and functional usage and then also the infrastructure and support that comes around these vehicles. And here's what I mean by that. The average UK driver, it's across the way, drives about 142 miles a week or 7,400 miles a year. That ends up being about 20-ish miles per day. And it's not too shabby when you think about it. And UK is a smaller geographical area. And in the EU, that number was 11,313 kilometers or 7,000 miles per year with an average of 19 miles per day. So again, pretty small numbers. But Americans, we love our cars, okay? So much so that the average in the same year was 39 miles per day with about 13.5 miles driven. I'm still doing RuneScape numbers in my head. And there's plenty of arguments within that stat. And sure, we can talk about public transportation and, and wanting to use trains and all that sort of stuff, or maybe grab a bike, but I don't use trains, okay? I use a 2001 Honda S2000 that makes more noise under boost than my first car build used to shake apart. <laughs> because it's awesome, all right? I don't want to tell you, all right? It's a hobby, sue me. Point is, when we look at the mileage of electric vehicles, range had always kind of been a concern. And when compared to countries like the UK or even just EU in general, it wasn't always apples to apples, which is a lot of times what happens when you look at it. It's it's just not. Everybody's like, oh, just be like Europe. You, you can't. Americans use their vehicles twice as much to drive twice as far that last for longer periods of time. And those are just facts, baby. So when EVs started entering the space, only to be quickly adopted by countries overseas, America had once again become the prideful grandpa that says things he probably shouldn't at Thanksgiving dinner when maybe, just maybe, okay, the good old red, white, and blue had a few genuine concerns about it. It was just maybe delivered a little bit wrong. Definitely wrong, bad analogy, but still you get the point. And that was straight mileage and not taking into consideration that every person that's listened to International Harvester at least twice has wanted to own an F-150 or Chevy 1500 versus a more practical Toyota Corolla or Nissan Leaf. Again, most of the things that are running around these days are SUVs and trucks. They're not Nissan Glorious. Next up, you have this thing called functionality. And that's the real kicker, actual function. As a commuter vehicle, I think EVs make for a great replacement. After all, you're just replacing that, what would be like a beautifully vandalized train car for a private taxi that has almost perfect auto drive functionality, except for every once in a while when it crashes. But if you're someone that utilizes their vehicle past just a point of necessary travel, electric vehicles can start to cause issues. Now remember, I'm a Midwestern automotive content creator. I'm not located in Los Angeles or like one of those cool places like everyone thinks. Unlike the big boys on the West and East Coast, my city's populace is about 70,000, okay? I travel a ton, but a lot of what I do on the weekends requires a truck or SUV with some serious capabilities because I like the ability to tow things because most of my shit is broken all the time. It's especially good for a travel day or when we're heading to Road America where I know it's gonna break when it's there, okay? And that convenience is huge. And for the longest time, a EV that could haul something and could actually take on a few pounds just wasn't possible without some sort of insane draw or terrible mileage. Now that doesn't even begin to talk about the damn drain that batteries get when the weather drops below 30 degrees, which is again, a thing outside of California and even Northern California people have to deal with it. Now we aren't here to complain, but if we could just take a second
second and stop reading the CNN or Fox one-liner that's scrolling and start to understand a bit more as to why the adoption may be difficult for some than it is for others, you won't have to put up with some of those ridiculous, stupid TikToks and sad music talking about cars being dead because in actuality, I'd be willing to put a couple, two, three, you know, shoelaces on it, maybe even the old Burks. I'm wearing Burks and pants, don't judge me, that there's no way California is gonna be able to go straight EV by 2035 because they don't even have an electrical grid to handle it. And of course the doozy of excuses that my dad likes to use is, well, where I'm at, there's no charging stations. He's Hispanic. Not American, doesn't sound like that at all, okay? But you get my point. And to be fair, it is a good point. There's, here's a map, okay, of my city that shows where we're at and a total of 25 charging stations in the Fox Valley, Wisconsin area. And 80% of them are hotels and are customer use only. The great news is that while we're getting more stations than, you know, in our tiny little town, which is nice, I like it. And plenty of others, both here in the US and also overseas, it's still a tough nugget to plug into in like our everyday lives versus almost having having a gas station around every single corner. Quick Trip is like half a mile away, okay? So when you look at Rivian, another electric vehicle producer making bold claims about some ridiculous capable truck with some ridiculously good network and some absolutely zero drawbacks. It's the perfect vehicle. There's nothing wrong with it ever. You can't go wrong. And when I even saw it at Tesla Takeover, it was really cool. And it can make you think that maybe, just maybe, it's a little bit far-fetched. Like we've had the rug pulled under us enough and I don't really blame you. And that's why there's so much cautious optimism about Rivian and around it, but I'm still, no matter what, I'm still excited about. Sure, the company is new, being founded in 2009 and really only catching waves once it raised over $13.5 billion in its IPO stage in November of 2021, which is really why you start to hear about it a lot more. Now, it secured a badass electric vehicle Dan thing with Amazon and started producing the truck of the future, which was the R1T pickup. And I absolutely love this thing. The R1T has eight drive modes, four for on the road and four for off the road. It has all wheel drive. It has a bajillion torque and has a shit ton of horsepower. None of that stuff matters. It has a storage compartment in between the doors, which I think is perfect for hiding a box. It has camp kitchen, adventure gear, and 11,000 pounds of towing capacity, which means it can do in an enclosed aluminum trailer and a car. So on paper, it is the perfect truck. Its parts are made up of recycled material to prevent any sort of heavy impact to the environment and is aiming to challenge every manufacturer to do the same. Again, I think that's awesome. And it touts a pretty robust charging network and aims to get more models out even past the R1T, including an SUV and of course some performance sedan models because that's just how these EVs work. And that's where my cautious attitude really starts to come into play because I want to love Rivian and I would love to own one. But at the end of the day, you're taking a pretty heavy risk on a lot of different elements. One is the sheer fact that the Rivian Rivian Adventure Network isn't even done. And it's not even close to what they showcase on the map, at least by how I understand it. The green pins are planned charging sites, but the yellow ones are active charging sites. And you can see that their favorite color is green. Not only that, but the damn ice train from any EV being in the cold is still pretty aggressive, which means most owners, especially EV owners, have to plan for a third to a half of their charge to be lost just due to the weather. And just like all vehicle manufacturers, but most certainly these new hip ones like Rivian, supply chain issues are going to hurt the most, not just in new production, but production management and servicing old vehicles. And that's not to say that they even know how to do that yet. And just how well their servicing network will scale with its adoption, I think is super cool and I think it's super fancy, but it's still going to be very temperamental and probably a little bit difficult, which is the entirety of having an electric vehicle right now. But what do you think? Will Rivian take the center stage even over Tesla? The truck is Slick. I like it and I want one, but I also want a car that's not marked up $60,000 because again, it's just like, I I would also like an EV that doesn't have firmware updates that limit the power. <coughs> Mustang EGT, you know, I, I that, that's just my thing. Also, thanks for watching. I'm Alex, Alex.Martini with two underscores on Instagram. We will see you later. Goodbye.